This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post. Brought to you by the Fort Hall School of Government coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 1st of June 2020 and I am 2J. I'm 2 And I am DM. Happy Madaraka Day. Let's take a look at today's headlines. On the Daily Nation, the promise of independence. The Standard, a season of coups. And in the star, Mudavadi links Raila to Weta Ford K. <laughs> Auster. <laughs> What a mouthful. Mm -hmm. But before we get into the headlines, today was our very, the president led the very first virtual Madaraka Day mm -hmm. from State House, where only a handful of people were invited. Of course, we are living in Corona times yeah. and uh, social distancing must be observed. Mm -hmm. He did give a, what did you think about the speech, guys? Did you watch it? I thought it was a fantastic speech. I thought well, it was one for the book. Uh, I think yeah. it's a beautiful speech. Yeah. I think the best speech is ever made on Madaraka Day. <laughs> really? Yes. I think so too, actually. Um, and I think he, we can roughly talk about it in four parts. Mm. Uh, he talked about the unfinished business, yes. reimagining Kenya, mm -hmm. transforming civic culture, and constitutional rigidity. Mm. <laughs> I particularly liked the unfinished business um, concept, yes. where he was... Uh, he made this comparison that painted a picture of where we were on mm. the first Madaraka day and mm. where we and where we are now and yeah. the mm. gains that we have made. Mm. Yeah. I really like how he put uh, numbers side by side. Uh, <laughs> no he, shame at all. <laughs> yeah, he said, which is really good. We are taking stock. Yeah. And he said um, the colonial government yes. or at independence. Yeah. The colonial government had constructed 1,800 kilometers of, of roads mm -hmm. since, they, since they came. Yeah. And which translated to 23 kilometers a year. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's government has been constructing 1,000 kilometers a year mm. since they came into government in 2013. Yeah. yeah. So that was quite remarkable. The, the other thing I was struck by mm. is the, the way he, he peppered the whole speech with a historical lens. Yes, I think yeah. he really took us Kenyans to, to school mm -hmm. by making reference to the intellectual musings of the founders of the founding fathers, and, the, and the books they had written and the I think yeah, he paper. referred to it as the original blueprint the that original, we were left with. Yeah. Ab absolutely. And once again, it's about um, taking us uh, back to where we started and mm -hmm. the visions uh, that the founding fathers had mm -hmm. and what we have accomplished so far and how much we have um, to yeah, go. Achieved. And I think it went really well, linking that unfinished business with the reimagining Kenya. Yeah. So, you know, kind of like putting us in a position to understand where we are, or f rather where we came from, mm -hmm. where we are now, and then reimagining this Kenya that we're going to be like stepping into. Yeah. And then one thing that really struck me was when he talked about this transformation of our civic culture. Yeah. You know, saying that Kenyans need to be dutiful, to be hardworking, to, yeah. and to do all of these things with dignity. Mm -hmm. And he made reference to um, the seven social sins, I think they're called. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, religion without sacrifice, politics without principle. Mm -hmm. And I think, as we're hitting this reset button, as he spoke about, I think those are things that we need to be thinking about. What kind of Kenyans do we want to be? What you know? Yeah. What underlines the people that we are? We want to. We want people to talk of Kenyans and say that they are dignified, they're dutiful, they're hardworking. Yeah. And I think that Corona is that moment for us to really reset. transform and shift how we you know perceive ourselves and how others perceive us as well. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, the end game of this speech mm. was one thing the thing he called constitutional rigidity. And I like what he said, that our constitution is a living document. And I mean, it has to work for us, you know? And what he was actually going, the end game here was BBI. And mm. he said- Without saying uh, it. Without <laughs> saying it, uh, that this is exactly where we are going. And you see guys, the context of this is, and I'll mention two things. Mm. First is uh, people thought that the DP will not attend today. And mm. he was there, and he was actually laughing with with, mm. with, with, the, with the big man, but also other and people. He gave a good introductory yes, speech. Yes, and, <laughs> yes, and, 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 yes, he did. <laughs> But also the man who's been talking about, who's been uh, saying that he will not join the bandwagon, Musalia Mudavadi, was also in attendance. You know, they were all brought in together. Mm. And the second thing I want to mention is, uh, Madaraka Day speech cannot happen. I, I, would, I mean, was going to happen in the context of what happened yesterday. You see, guys, during the weekend something mm. happened. Uh, Francis Atuli hosted uh, Mbuzi for about uh, 40 guys from Western Kenya, and then the following day on a Sunday, Moses Wetangula was uh, removed 
from being party leader of Ford Kenya. Mm. And then today the speech about constitutional rigidity happens. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? The end game is happening. We are going to have a parliamentary system very soon. <laughs> whether we and like it's happening it or not. In slow motion mm -hmm. and every actor, whether you like it or not, has been brought and is now dancing mm -hmm. to working at a stone. Yeah. Kusha. Wow, we all look, read different things into the speech. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Wetangula, let's go back to the headlines. Yeah. The Standard and the, is it the Star? The Star, yeah. Are actually covering the same story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're talking about uh, Moses Wutangula losing his uh, party or being ousted from his party yeah. as the party leader. But the Star is giving a different angle, saying mm. that who was responsible for it? No one but <coughs> Raila. Mm. <laughs> so, and it is Musale Mudavadi who has linked uh, Raila Odinga to the scheme to remove um, the Ford Kenya boss, Moses, Moses Wutangula. So the NEC, the Ford Kenya NEC, accused Watangla of gross misconduct and failing to champion unity in the party. Those are very vague allegations mm -hmm. to M. Mm -hmm. On a Sunday. <laughs> the guy is removed on a Sunday, a yeah. day before the speech is read. Mm -hmm. I think out of all the politicians we've ever had in this country, Watangla has really suffered, <laughs> continually suffered a series of unfortunate events. Mm -hmm. yeah. If every time he's on the national limelight <laughs> or on the on the headlines, he's it's either, either being, about being he's being publicly <laughs> as ready, assaulted. physically assaulted being or uh, he's lost his majority or minority leadership seat. Mm -hmm. uh, gold sc scandal, wasn't that Watangula? Yes. yes. The Dubai yes. gold mm -hmm. scandal. And then now he has lost his own party. His own party. Mm. Two years before an election yes corona is a hard time for everyone so it really is particularly him what is the daily nation telling us well the daily nation is just reminding us this promise of independence uh, mm. i think the headline itself and the picture that they chose are very beautiful mm. um and then here they give a quote that mm. uh president jomo kenyatta gave after the 63 kanu victory mm. yeah we shall build a country where every citizen may develop his talents to the full mm. restricted only by the larger aim we have of building a fair society yeah. there will be no privilege for any minority mm. Mm. equally we shall see that no member member of any group undergoes discrimination or oppression at the hands of the majority. Mm. So just kind of like outlines the history of this um, this day, Madaraka Day, yeah. from the very first one we had 57 years ago, mm. kind of leading up to the events of today. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think beautiful headline, beautiful picture. I think it goes without saying they carry the day. It's very apt on Madaraka yes. Day to have a an inspirational headline. But I do give it to the standard. To a the standard, a season, a season of coups, even the pictures that they selected, I think very well done, just unfortunately overshadowed by the events of the day. Let me tell you, season of coups, and it's about to happen. Yeah, it's about to happen. It's been is happening. it about to happen or it's happening? It's happening. No, no it's, we it's are happening. in the season. What I'm saying is about to happen is a uh, the parliamentary system yeah. that is the end game. All these coups that are happening, these are such small details, just mm. moving parts of an entire bigger game. There's an entire bigger scheme. Uh, in, in all this. Fort Kenya is happening in Fort Kenya. ANC will do something. Uh, Waipa is uh, having a neck meeting. Uh, Kanu is joining with Jubilee. All these moving parts are yeah. going to come into one big part. Mm. And the thing that's going to happen is going to be big in this country. Twem, do you think that as the Deputy President was sitting today in State House clapping gleefully at the speech, yeah. did he not know that is what is um, did he have a the choice? end game as you're calling did, it? Does he have a choice? <laughs> he doesn't have a choice. Yeah, he was summoned there. Yeah. So who gives choice. us our winning headline? The standard. A daily Nation. To um, I think we need to respect the day. So we already know it's a promise of independence. I think respect the day. I, I think the, the daily, daily nation. nation gives us our winning headline. Oh, I also want to be <laughs> I think we have time for cartoons, real quick. Do we? We we, do. we actually do not to to Jay, but maybe we can just have a look at them. Mm -hmm. The Daily Nation, we have two lines there, one very short one mm. where the government is offering free government testing and the other one, the government is, of, is offering relief, mm. so <laughs> giving people food. And understand, uh, understandably, the line for relief is longer, snaking all and the way not to observing the social horizon. distancing. And it's not. Yeah. It's a rubbish. <laughs> In the standard. Standard, you have uh, a Kenyan, then uh, chained. Sh chained and shackled. Now chained and shackled, but now upside down. Mm. Same state, but uh, <laughs> different Taxes. position. And it says taxpayers. Mm. Yeah, taxpayers, mm. ah, whatever, man. You know, in the president's oh. speech today, he said something interesting, that we are continually confessing negativity. Yeah. And we are falling into a pit of acid, acidic yeah. pessimism. pessimism. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The star? The star, I have ozone, a caricature of Uhuru Kenyatta. And uh, he is 
reading a speech <laughs> virtually. He has that thing they put on the eyes. Like, I don't know what. Yeah, the, the VR, yeah, the yeah VR headset. Machine. Yes, and on top he's wearing a suit, and down he's wearing a shorts called a Cheers Baba. Yeah. And the, the <laughs> caption. Presidential <laughs> undergarment. <laughs> the caption there is that to imagine the millions we would be sa we would be saving on national festivities. <laughs> it's funny, but it's very pessimistic. No, I think it's also making reference to the fact that because of this um, corona moment and the virtual meetings and yeah. conversations people have, yeah. you, as 2M, I think maybe you can attest to this, yeah. you may be business on top, yeah. but party I played the under the yeah. table. <laughs> How is that what is happening I, I, I <laughs> under the, the table? I don't know what 2J knows. <laughs> I think personally that the cartoons today are extremely uninspiring. Yeah, definitely. All of them tossed up. So, Toss them all. no winning cartoon. So, what is our final thought? And now, our final thought. It is inspired by a book entitled How History Gets Things Wrong mm. The Neuroscience of Our Addiction to Stories by mm. Alex Rosenberg. Yes, written mm. in 2018. So, I first will look at chapter two entitled how many times can the German army play the same trick? Yeah. Mm. And the answer is four times. <laughs> so the story starts in the summer of 1870. Mm. Otto von Bismarck planned on tricking Napoleon III yeah. into declaring war on Prussia. Mm. Yeah. In doing so, this would allow Bismarck to mm. call upon the alliance of the German states yeah. to defend their federation. Yeah. So the German army surrounded the French and they captured Napoleon III. Mm. This happened, happened at the Battle of Sedan mm. on the 1st of September 1870. Mm. By the late summer next of 1914, mm. 44 years later, the Germans had been refining what was known as the Scheiflin plan. Mm. And this time they said that France would be defeated, not by a frontal attack in Sedan like they had 44 years prior, but by a vast encirclement. Mm. But the Germans feared that the French would know about the Scheiflin plan, mm. and so they decided to modify it. Mm. And instead of heading west, the German army would go through mm. the forest, mm. exactly where they had met the French 44 years ago in 1870. Mm. It succeeded. Mm. Next, in the following years in world, during World War I, yeah. a new generation of French military historians decided to study military operations of the Germans in secret. Mm. And despite the two previous rounds with the Germans 70 years before, yeah. the French were surprised again, like in 19, um, in 1870, yeah. when the Germans did the exact same thing for the third time. Yes. Finally, mm. four years and six months later, mm. the armies of Britain and the United States yes. stood exactly where the French army had stood in May 1940, yes. at which point Hitler launched his largest full-scale offensive of World War II. Yeah. And he did so mm. again mm. in the very same place where the Germans had attacked in World War, sorry, in 1870, mm. 1914, and 1940 yeah. in the Sedan. Yeah. Mm. So we have the situation where four years Sorry, four times in 70 years, yeah. the Germans attacked in the exact same place. Yeah. Mm. But the question is, how could their adversaries get this so terribly wrong so many times in the same way, in the same place? Because mm. common sense and prudence would say that the Germans should not have done that. Yeah. But for some reason, it worked. So in this book, the uh, um, author argues that historians have been getting this idea of historical narratives very wrong. They've been under this belief or this spell that believing... Um, that people act with purpose or with reason will help you understand history. And he says that by studying history, we misunderstand that we can understand people's motivations and their actions. Yeah. But in truth, the author says mm. that history can teach us nothing <laughs> or next to nothing. Yeah. And he says that we cannot know the motivations or purposes behind the actions of other people. Mm. And he says that for the English language or for English speakers, it's very hard because the word history is ambiguous. Mm. He says that it's used to both describe mm. what happened in the past mm. yeah. and the very different study of what happened in the past. Yeah. And he says that for Germans, for example, mm. they have two different terms. Mm. One describes what happened, those events themselves. Yeah. And another term describes the history of those, of those events. Yeah. And he says that it makes it difficult for English speakers to understand the narrative history and the analysis of history. Mm -hmm. And he says that what narrative history gets wrong is the explanations of what happened. Yeah. That the wrong thing is misunderstanding the why. We may mm -hmm. get the facts right, yeah. that Hitler walked out of his house and walked from point A to point B. Yeah. What we get wrong mm. is the analysis or the understanding of what motivated mm. Hitler to do that thing. Precisely. And so he says the moral of the story here mm. is to not use um, military history yeah. before you go, the, uh, rather the an understanding of military history before you go to war. 
I thought it's a very, very interesting book. Very yeah. good, very apt, mm. very apt, and very apt with what actually I'm going to say. Mm. You see, he has this chapter, he, it's, he's entitled, Why Did Hitler Declare War on the United States? He says, that's easy, that's too easy to explain, too easy. And uh, you see, there's this overriding uh, theory that Hitler attacked uh, 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 America. He declared war on America in December of, uh, 1941, mm. four days after Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And he says, they say it's because Hitler was so emotional and he loved the dramatic effect with which the Japanese attacked uh, Pearl Harbor mm. so in, he uh, to four copy days paste. earlier. So he liked it. He, I mean, he would like it as well. Yeah. But also, let's remember that uh, Hitler's attack on the Soviet Union in, a pl in an operation called Operation Barbo Barbarossa. 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 Rosa was actually very dramatic and that was kind of, that, that was Hitler's kind of he was very emotional about it as well but he says that there are rational reasons that Hitler used to attack America not the emotional reason that uh, historians use mm. and uh, they have said that Hitler used something they call a belief box that he had two things in his belief box mm. first that he 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 thought that uh, Japan's uh, military, military capability was far superior to anything that he had witnessed and they would be able to cloud uh, America and beat America in in, in case of war mm. and uh, he thought that the effect of uh, using uh, what, what are they called kamikaze on uh, on Pearl yeah, Harbor the, the effect yes the suicidal guys that they yes that the effect was greater than it actually turned out to be but second he thought that should he attack America uh, America would be on the back foot and uh, there was no way America would win a war mm. with two countries uh, Japan and, so attack and, and them Germany. When they're down. So attack them when they are down. They will mm. be on the back foot. Dogpiling, uh, do uh, uh, dog <laughs> as Dogpiling, yeah. as she calls it. And uh, and and this is this rational reasons is what he has conceptualized to a concept called the theory of mind. And allow me to just explain to our viewers what it means. Yeah. He says the theory of mind makes use of both occurrent and mm. non-occurrent beliefs and desires to explain and predict behavior. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. It assumes also that people's memories for facts about their surrounding uh, surroundings, past and present, enable them to, miss, to meet most of their desires. Mm. And this was uh, historians. Uh, this was actually what the historians, uh, you know, mm. uh, uh, f fell on. They thought because of all these uh, factors of of, ja of Japan having mm. attacking America, the Soviet or Union, the Soviet Union, that the Hitler, French the even, French yeah. even, that that Hitler would always respond as he always knew based on emotion but they actually never knew that this man actually used a lot of logic in attacking america although he lost <laughs> so usually say what we learn from history is that we history don't learn from history. exactly from history. yeah mm -hmm. the thing that uh, hit me or struck me about this book yeah. is the author um, asking that we remove narratives yeah. from uh, history as tuje has just explained yeah but I'm thinking the concept of understanding history cannot really be removed from from stories yeah. or mm. from narratives. Mm. And not just because the events themselves are stories. Mm. Events had things preceding them and yeah. things that happened afterwards, which collectively make a story. But also because um, history is was undertaken or happened yeah. through human actors yes. and human actors in themselves mm. are, are stories yeah. and we've also said many times before on this table mm. that as human beings we are more prone to remembering things if they are stories, stories not yeah. figures and Precisely. and uh, graphs and numbers yeah. so even when we look at history in that way in a quantitative sense yeah. those figures and graphs and numbers yeah. need a spokesperson or a storyteller to tell mm. us to give it life and yeah. to say this is this is what um happened mm. so the author is um actually suggests mm. that perhaps we will get an accurate um understanding and interpretation of history mm. if we look at it through game theory yeah. mm. now how many people would actually be able to consume history in that way yeah just 2j and a few <laughs> others <laughs> you're a big fan of, of game theory um but perhaps and i was thinking of another book um that i think we've done here by hayden uh, white called meta history mm. and i was thinking that this is probably what the author should have referred uh us to because hayden looks at um what is called narratology, mm -hmm. which is a subset or a subfield of literary uh, history. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and this field talks about how to remove your projections for when you are um, giving, constructing a narrative, mm -hmm. but also when you are reading and, and interpreting a narrative. Mm -hmm. However, there I agree with the author. Mm. We see things as we are, mm. not as they yeah. are. Yeah. 
and nobody knows this as much as Africans mm. because our history has always been um, written by other people mm. and so it has their their history is a narrative our history is a narrative of other people's projections mm. so in fact in some sections of the book I was half expecting the author to quote Chinua Achebe <laughs> that <laughs> until the lions have their own historians yeah. the history of the hunt will mm. always Glorified glorify the hunter mm -hmm. yeah. On a day where we had a winning headline from the Daily Nation, Nation and the cartoon did not inspire us. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on your TV screens on Pang Free to Air, Star Times and Go TV. Have a good night and see you tomorrow.